So basically, the socialist vote will never win in the NC. It's okay. not its character. All right. That's it. All right, and Klanta, thank you. Interesting. Maputle and Polakwani. Maputle, hi, good morning. Uh, is this Maputle and Polakwani or Mukotwe and Maputle and Tswane? It's in Tswane. Stephen, morning to you. Morning. COVID. Yeah, no, the ANC, I think the ANC is wrapping up. It's, coming, it's becoming a dead horse now. The, the, I mean, the, the, we don't have to talk about it anymore. Stephen, my call today is about the origin of the virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I would like you to invite me one day <laughs> to the studio to challenge this notion of the virus, whether it exists or not. Oh, Maputle. Oh, no, no, no. do, you, do you have a science degree or any qualification in science? I'm, I'm in engineering. I'm, I've got an engineering diploma. Okay, well, I've got a journalism degree, and I would never talk about engineering. No, but listen, Stephen. You, you have one narrative. Yeah? Uh -huh. There's another gem, the gem theory which was, uh, you know, uh, brought about by people like Rudolf Steiner. Do you know Rudolf Steiner? No. And Louis, Louis Pasteur. These are the guys who are responsible for this gem theory. Mm -hmm. They took a bacterium. A bacterium is just an, a harmless microbe that you find in the skin. They turned that into a gem theory to say this causes disease. Later on, they perfected their theory and uh, say a virus causes disease. The virus has never been proven anyway. No physicist has ever isolated a virus. So, Maputle, so you're saying that COVID doesn't exist and is not brought together by a virus? The virus does not exist, Stephen. Okay, Maputle, can you hear this? Do you know what yes, that banging I mean. is? That banging is me banging my head against the table, okay? <laughs> You're just Stephen, wrong. Please invite, me, please, please invite me to the studio or uh, get me uh, the Salim, Salim Karim. I'll debate him any day, any time. Maputle, I'm not going to put the good professor through that. But as you say that, and I rub my head, wondering about my life choices from time to time, would you believe that <laughs> Professor Salim Abdul Karim, I really didn't mean for this to happen, actually on the line now because we want to talk about the origins of COVID-19. Professor Salim Abdul Karim, good morning. Good morning, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Good morning to all of the listeners. Really shouldn't have banged my head on the table, but sometimes I have to do <laughs> something. Um, we're talking about the origins of COVID-19. Put my putle out of his misery. It's a virus, right? Oh, without question. And the reason we know it's a virus is because we know its genetic sequence and we know its family lineage. In other words, we know where it comes from. It's like having a whole family tree. We know exactly where it comes from. Okay. There's, the reason we invited you on at this time was there are two new studies that, 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 that basically took different approaches. They arrived at exactly the same conclusion of where the virus came from. We now know that it came from Wuhan. How did they do it? All right, so when I was talking just now about where it came from, we know that it comes from the lineage of viruses. So we, we know that SARS-CoV-2 is a virus. It's closely related to viruses from the bats and from particularly from horseshoe bats. But that's where those coronaviruses come from. These two new studies are quite amazing. The first study looks at the earliest of those viruses that were available, and they show that there are two separate lineages, lineage A and lineage B, and they show that the two lineages are slightly different. So in other words, the virus jumped from bats into humans in two separate events. So for those who've been arguing that you know it comes from some kind of lab leak, it makes this more unlikely now that that's true because when you have zoonoses, where you have jumps from animals into humans, there's often multiple. For example, HIV has at least eight points at which it jumped into humans, and they all differ, and we've given them the labels A to G. Now, we know with SARS-CoV-2 that there are two lineages that came into humans. One petered out and one spread quite rapidly. The second paper by Waterby is amazing in its pictures and its geography. What it shows is that all of the, or not all, but almost all of the first set of cases come from the Wuhan seafood market. 
So this idea that it came from some lab is just shown to be incorrect in that they showed that the environmental samples in the lab, in the market, in other words, swabs that were taken off the surfaces, show that this coronavirus was present and that all the cases initially uh, that occurred, occurred from spread from the Wuhan market. So those two papers provide pretty strong evidence that this is a zoonosis. It comes from uh, animals into humans, probably through, the, uh, most likely, at the seafood market. Um, it's still amazing to me that a virus can change, and with one, I suppose, relatively simple change for the virus, suddenly have such a huge impact on another species, in this case, us as human beings, that suddenly it was able to move so quickly from one human to another. I'm not disagreeing with the hypothesis. What I'm saying is that it's, it's, it's quite amazing what a virus can do. Yeah, so we need to understand that um, this is not new, that this particular bat, the horseshoe bat, has thousands of coronaviruses. And that in 2002, a coronavirus from that bat jumped into humans through a civet cat. And that's what caused the original SARS. So the original outbreak of SARS was from the same bat, this similar coronavirus jumping into humans, but uh, it did so through a cat. Then in 2012, we had another horseshoe bat, also a coronavirus from that bat, coming into humans through camels, and there it caused MERS. And now, of course, in 2019, we got SARS-CoV-2 doing the same thing. So the question is, why does it do so? Why would that be a threat to us? Well, bat coronaviruses are not a threat to us. We, uh, we could be walking in the midst of bat coronaviruses. Those bat coronaviruses can't infect humans because they don't have the ability to attach to human cells. But it's when they go through an intermediate host, like the civet cat or the camel, uh, then they acquire that ability. They get a sequence of genes that enable them to attach to a receptor in the human called the ACE2 receptor. And it happens that humans have lots of ACE2 receptors, especially in our nose and throat. So when this bat coronavirus gets this particular gene that enables it to attach to human cells, which it did in 2002, which it did in 2012, which it did again in 2019, that's when it can infect humans. And it's going to likely do it again in a few years' time because the bat and many coronaviruses, and because we are encroaching in their territory, they now can infect, that the, these viruses jump by other animals often into humans. Professor, I really appreciate the time as always. Thank you. Professor Salim Abdul Karim is the head of Caprisa and, of course, a clinical and infectious diseases epidemiologist. You're with SAFM 27 after 8. This is SAFM Sport with Zai Khan. Zai.